Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Uh, this is probably way too loud, but we'll see that in the replay. Um, last year, in November, I went to China for the first time. And the main goal was to meet Allnet and my production partner there. But while there, we also took a trip to a PCB factory, the PCB factory where they make the Quinn LED boards, an assembly plant, and I also took some photos and videos of what Allnet actually does and their flashing and testing procedures, etc. So I thought maybe it would be nice to make some videos for you guys and to show you the PCB factory, the assembly plant and things like that. Now, this isn't going to be one of those well-planned out cameraman production park kind of things like stranger parts or things like that. This is me uh, on a tour and they said, hey, we don't mind if you film everything. And I'm like, okay. So I whipped out my phone and I filmed everything with my phone. <laughs> so there's gonna be lots of photos and some videos and I'll try and put it in a logical chronological order because the way they did the tour, especially at the, uh, the PCB factory was all kinds of wild and was like crisscross through everything. <laughs> but we did get to see a lot of cool stuff. So uh, if you want to follow along and see where the Queen LED PCB boards get made, let's have a look. So to start off, I went to Shenzhen, which is the popular tech mecca in China. And that's also where Allnet is located. If you'd like to see a video about me walking around there in the markets and some of the stuff I saw over there, let me know down in the comments uh, and I'll try and add that to one of the videos. But we drove about two and a half, three hours to another city and there the PCB manufacturer was. They had this giant building as you can see here. And it's funny, but this immediately illustrates one of the things I noticed in China. These people don't speak English. They don't get taught English. So even if they have an official sign like this, there is a very clear Borad <laughs> spelling mistake on there. They just don't know because most people there don't speak English. So Google Translate was very handy to, you know, have along. For PCB manufacturing, they start off with a substrate that basically already has a copper sheet applied. And here you can see some racks where they have giant sheets of two-sided copper. So it states the thickness in millimeters, so like 1.2 millimeters or 1.5 or 1.6 millimeters and then the amount of copper that is on each side. Um, as you can see here, the boards, you can see the, 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 the fiberglass material in the middle and then the two copper sheets. Now for uh, four layer boards, this is slightly different, but these are mostly for two layer boards. Four layer boards, they basically uh, have multiple layers on, on top of each other that they stack. Actually, we'll be looking at two cool machines they use for that later in the video. Next up, we can see some chemical processing production lines we see here. I don't know if they do the drilling on the PCB first or later. I saw both, so I'm not really sure. They have a smaller production line where you can see the a giant crane is dumping or dunking basically those boards into all kinds of chemical solutions. I don't know what they use, but they use it to basically etch the traces into the copper. And the second one you'll see is a much bigger version of that where it's very wide and they have multiple workers working the line. And you can see the, the, the giant copper plates, although some are already cut and drilled, coming off of the line and they prepare them for the next steps. Here is one of those cool machines I wanted to mention, and that is an advanced optical inspection, where the machine basically knows what should be on that layer, and then they put in one of these layers. Now, this is actually an internal layer of a dig quad, if you 
pay close attention, you might recognize some of the layout. And the machine basically checks if whatever was etched is done correctly. Next up is a dual setup machine that does drilling. The funny thing is, if they have to do a lot of them, they have a lot of these same sheets. So basically they have two heads which do identical motions so they can have twice the throughput. Now this machine can use all kinds of drill bits and different sizes and things like that. And it's really fast at stamping in those drills uh, to make uh, fias or um, a screw terminal connections or anything that needs to be drilled through the board. Sadly, I don't have a lot of the other processes that they would do, like putting in the vias and things like that. Uh, this tour was kind of a really a big mix and, well, everyone only spoke Chinese, so I only got some second-hand translation off some people we were with. So yeah, that's kind of difficult. Oh, here's another board they happen to be working on. This is a full sheet of Quinn LED data boosters. Now this is a two layer board, so both layers are on this single board and it's already done with the drilling and the copper process. So they just need to put on solar mask. That's the color mask you see so that nothing can short out when it touches the board and then the silk screen and then it's mostly done. Now, sadly, I don't have any videos of a solar masking or silk screening because we didn't get to see that part. Uh, okay, uh, but yeah, one cool machine we did see and I tried to stay away from a little bit was this X-ray machine. If you're using multiple layers and you need to make sure that these layers are aligned properly, they can use this X-ray machine to actually look through the copper and into the multiple layers stacked on top of each other and if production is going correctly. And well, as I said, sadly, then they skipped a few parts. We didn't see any silk screening or uh, solder masking, other way around, but you know. But one of the next machines they had was an electrical inspection machine where it basically knows the circuits in the Gerber file and it does electrical connection testing between all of the lines that are on the board to see if they are connecting correctly or maybe shorted together and something like that. So if then there's a manufacturing defect, they should catch it even well before it goes out of the door. The next step, if you have one of these giant panels and it passed all the tests and everything else, is routing. Often you'll have different board shapes or it needs to be cut out of a panel and well, they have all kinds of routing bits and again, a dual machine that can route out many pieces at the same time because next to having two heads on the same machine, they also had multiple plates stacked together. So when you have a small board like this, you can imagine that production costs go down because you can do lots of them at the same time. note though while I was standing there there was this very weird pop-up on this guy's screen I don't know what game they're playing on this machine but I, I don't know if I would do that <laughs> or maybe maybe the machine software just unlocked some kind of very special high power perk 
I, I don't know what was going on there. <laughs> Next up is an alternative method if you don't want to route out your PCB or well, uh, not completely at least, you can do a V-score. And a V-score is that they basically make a slight incision in the PCB so that you can actually break it apart uh, when you want to separate it. So you can do mouse scores or other techniques in, to divide your PCBs, but V-scores are very nice to have a single PCB which you can then populate with components and then break away cleanly to then have separate PCBs. And well, the last area they showed us was the packaging station and uh, all kinds of projects and PCBs that were already packaged or ready to go for customers. This is more of a business to business uh, company instead of like uh, PCB way or JLC PCB where there is lots of individual customers. Hence why the Queen LED boards also get made here. And then they also had some really cool stuff to show us. Here you can see some keyboard designs that do very funky things with uh, colors. Uh, different color silkscreen, different color solar mask, different color PCB board itself. And by using combinations of that, you can actually create some pretty nice artwork. Then they showed us a very high power PCB where lots of current was running through it with very thick copper layers. And last, and they will also be rounding off this video, is they showed us a PCB that they did on a glass substrate. I, I didn't even know that was possible. They said it was very special and very hard to do, but it was one of the techniques they could do. Now, I don't think we're ever going to use that on one of my boards, but it was certainly cool to see. And well, that's already it for this factory tour. I know we missed some steps. I did too while I was there. I don't actually know if they understood our visit. They knew I was, you know, the creator of the boards and I, I you know, that they have to make them now and then for me. <laughs> but I don't know if they thought it was like an inspection visit or something like that. Still, it was really cool to see my boards being produced there in actual reality you know, being in the facility that actually makes them. And uh, the next step on well, our tour will be the assembly factory. Again, I didn't catch all the parts uh, that I wanted to, but it was still fun to see in a good tour. And they also had a really cool part counting machine, but that will be in the next video. Let me know what you think of these videos. If it's, you know, why am I watching this make informative videos about LEDs and other stuff? or if you'd like to see more. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.